Your training and experience as a security guard and in your testimony just now about ways to de-escalate the situation. Did you see Tao doing anything like that while you were there on that scene? Sustained. Sidebar. You were asked multiple times about being angry. That's correct. And more and more upset as time went on. Correct. So why? Why did you get angry and more and more upset as time went on? Because, again, they were not listening to anything that I was telling them. Uh, I felt like I had to speak out for Floyd because he was speaking out to the officer and there was no feedback, no emotion, no nothing. Like, I literally looked in his eyes and had, as I'm talking what, to him. I mean, I'll just you know, yeah. stop you there. What's we're, gonna, that? we're gonna stop the answer there. Next question. Welcome back. I'm Drone Tech, and I want you to pay special attention to what that witness just said there, that he was having a conversation with George Floyd while he was on the ground. What was happening to Mr. Floyd? Uh, he was under distress. That answer will stand, but move on from that. You felt he was in danger? Correct. Uh, in danger of what? Objection, Your uh, Counsel Sidebar. So, Mr. Williams, um, why did you think it was so important that you were not being heard? Uh, because I felt like with the side choke, you lose consciousness, and I felt like he was in the process of losing consciousness also from the condition of my fish yeah. in the bag. So, so, uh, it's an overall. You can continue. Uh, so, like I said before earlier, he reminded me of my fish in the bag. So let me ask it this way then. Last, the last no will be stricken about the fish in the bag. And so then, I'm sorry. So you were concerned about Mr. Floyd losing his life? Correct. I have nothing further, Your Honor. You were asked a series of questions on redirect about um, your experience in mixed martial arts, if you recall? Correct. Uh, can you tell me about any of the conversations that you had as you were being rendered under unconscious in any of your fights? Your Honor, I'm going to object. You're saying... What did you do that? Uh, what, what did you do that? No, just wait. Let me rule on the objection first. The objection is overruled. You may answer if you have a recollection as to any time, ask the question again, but don't answer until I say so. When you were engaged in mixed martial arts, in your fights, in your competitive fights, can you tell me, were you able to have a conversation with your opponent as you were being rendered unconscious? Yes or no? We don't talk to each other, so no. Nothing further. Uh, all right, so you'll notice that the defense asked the witness, who is an MMA fighter, whether he has conversations with his opponents when he's choking them out. And he's obviously asking this because, as we know, a person who is being choked out, who can't breathe, isn't going to be able to talk. And that leads to the prosecution owning themselves. You said earlier you're not a medical doctor. That's totally correct. <clears throat> if Mr. Nelson is asking you whether a person can... Objection, Your Honor. Yeah. Stop. You're not allowed to give a medical opinion. Mr. Frank is going to ask you about your personal experience. If you have such a personal experience, you can talk about your personal experience. Uh, nothing more. Mr. Frank, please phrase it in terms of his personal uh, experience, not an opinion. I really wrong. In a mixed martial arts fight, when you are being rendered unconscious in a chokehold, you tap out, correct? Correct. And that's to prevent it from going too far. Correct, losing conscience. And the tap out is the communication you use to your opponent to say, hey, let up. That is correct. And your opponent has to follow that communication. That's correct. That's the rules of the fight. That's the rules of the fight. And so when you tap out, 
They know it's done, and it stops. Correct. And only time you go verbally. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Williams, you are excused. Thank you. So did you catch what happened there? The defense was making an argument that if this MMA fighter was having a conversation with Floyd when he was on the ground, then he was most likely able to breathe as well. I'm not really sure what the prosecution was trying to do there, but they essentially led their witness into admitting that he doesn't have conversations with people he's choking out, and that's exactly why they have to tap out. The fact of the matter is George Floyd was complaining about not being able to breathe long before they ever had him on the ground. I don't breathe. Get in the car. I can't Alex. breathe. I Take can't a seat. Breathe. Please, man. I can't fucking breathe. Here, come on out. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, so I don't really know, but it seems to me that someone they, that can't breathe can't talk either. And as we know, he was yelling, screaming, and having conversations with people around him. Some major self-ownage by the prosecution there. That's all I have for this one, so please just hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next video.